we're going to unbox a Volt Server demo kit. So here we have two boxes, Volt Server gear. We have a transmitter box. It's called that because it transmits their product, which is called digital electricity, to the receiver box. Inside this box, we have several different versions of digital electricity receivers. We'll get to those in just a minute, but first I'd like to show you the transmitter. So this is the Volt Server transmitter. There will be connections made here. Those are the output ports. And this particular transmitter takes standard 120 volt to 240 volt AC input from a wall outlet of some type and it converts it to converts that power to digital electricity which is then transmitted out to the receivers. Does that by way of this cable. This particular cable is eight pair 18 gauge and I will go ahead and plug them in. Okay, that's typically what the front of the receiver would look like. I'm going to circle around to the back and I will also plug in the AC power. As you can see, just a standard C19 connector here and 120 volt plug here. We can see the transmitter beginning its uh, startup process. So that transmitter is going to send power to any number of volt server receivers. And when I say receiver, I'm talking about a device that is receiving the digital electricity from the transmitter. We have a couple different varieties in this case. This is their RCA, RXAC2M. It is an a AC receiver, meaning it takes digital electricity in, converts it to 120 to 208 volts out so that it can drive devices that are typically rack mounted such as a PoE switch or a rack mounted server. I'm going to connect it up to the transmitter so we can see things begin to operate. Each pair of wires here is capable of up to 600 watts of power. That's significant considering what low voltage wire usually carries. These are 18 gauge, uh, very small conductor. The reason why they can use a small conductor though is because the voltage is high. This transmits at 336 volts DC. Any low voltage contractor can install this because it is safe. If you have facilities people who have to handle this gear, again, it's safe, uh, safe to the touch. So the next piece I'm going to get out is one of their DC receivers. So what this receiver does is take digital electricity in and it converts it to a DC, uh, normal DC output. So in this case it's about a 336 volt DC output. It does have a range between 310 and 350. 336 is kind of the sweet spot. And in this case, we have it connected to a mean well power supply. And what this does is converts the output voltage from the volt server receiver down to 48 volts, which is what the PoE switch needs in order to run. So I have these connected up. They are both DIN rail mountable. And so I will go ahead and install them on our DIN rail here. In this particular road case, as I put a couple of uh, pieces of technology in here, this is a hardened industrial PoE switch. It's DIN rail mounted and it will take power from the volt server receiver and convert it to power over ethernet. So all eight of these ports are power over ethernet ports and those can be used to power things like security cameras, access points, IP phones, and uh, I've also added a couple of 
interrupter switches to demonstrate the system's response to both arc fault and ground fault. Remember with volt server systems, a key component is that it can transmit high power, but it transmits it safely. So I'll show you what the system does whenever it goes into a fault state. Okay, so I have the receiver and the power supply installed on our DIN rail. And if you remember, we have our digital electricity transmitter here. And we have these four wires going back in and connecting to this plug here. So this is all digital electricity on this plug. Whenever I plug it in, you will see this device power up. And it will immediately also turn on the meanwhile power supply. We now have 48 volts DC on the end of this plug, which I'll plug into our switch and you can see it power up. To demonstrate the capabilities of the system, I've brought an IP PoE powered desk phone with me. I have also brought an older access point that is also PoE powered. I will power both of these off the PoE switch. So remember on this system, we now have the volt server transmitter transmitting power to a volt server receiver. The receiver is sending power to a meanwhile well power supply, which is changing the voltage to drive a PoE network switch. And on this device, if you select PoE and port status, it shows the power output of each of the ports on the switch. So we have power going to three different devices, an IP phone, an access point, and an IP camera. They're all driven off PoE. One of the great things about this system is that this cable, although it's very short here, could be well over a mile long and it would still power all three of those devices easily. At a mile, you could do over 300 watts of power on this cable. So, you know, if this is, it's only consuming 10 watts total on this network switch. So if you think about the, these devices, the volt server receiver, a meanwhile power supply, and a PoE switch out in some sort of a warehouse or a plant, you could have these devices centrally powered and have their data come from a central connection and have this, these three devices here driving cameras and access points throughout your facility very easily, again, on low voltage cable. This cable does not interfere with network transmission, so it can sit in the same cable pathway as these network cables without any degradation in the data that's transmitted over these cables. Okay. In order to monitor the system, Volt server devices are networkable just like any modern device. So I've plugged into its user interface port here and I've run that cable over to my computer. I've typed in the IP address, the username and password, and now I can see in real time the amount of power that is being transmitted by the Volt server system. There are a couple of pieces that I would like to demonstrate. You can stay focused on that screen Whenever the system sees a fault, it will, within a few seconds, tell you there is a fault detected on the system. And what that fault is, it's an arc fault. It's seeing connection between two of the 18 gauge wires that are run side by side. You can also see on the front of the receiver itself, the lights will flash red and green saying, hey, there's a fault on this pair of wires. Whenever I release the switch, it will take a few moments. It's waiting for a signal from the receiver saying everything is good to go and it will resume communication and power transmission. So you can see it's transmitting. It's showing the blue dot again. Everything is good and the fault on the screen also will have cleared. A couple of other interesting points are if I disconnect one of the pairs of wires on a receiver, if they get cut, 
you will very quickly see on the system that the wires are disconnected. Something that's interesting to note, if I do that on the wires that are transmitting power to these devices, that fault cleared, up here channels one through four, it will show a disconnect and then it immediately corrects the amount of power being sent out by the other three channels to make sure that the end devices are properly powered. I'll plug that pair of wires back in. The fault will clear and the wattages will return to what they were before. Additionally, with this system, one thing that network uh, cell carriers love about the system is that they can remotely cycle power to these devices. So right now it's set up for individual channels, but here it says create group. If I created a group called Volt Server Receiver Verizon Antenna 1, it would show me a line that had that title and an output switch that I can turn off and then turn back on. So it gives them the capability of remotely cycling power to any of the end devices. Again, think about, say you're in an Amazon warehouse, you're up high in the ceiling working on a network switch, Some you just have to cycle power to it, you lose your balance, uh, maybe fall, maybe get hurt. This system gives you the ability to reset the power remotely. You never have to leave your desk. One other thing I'd like to demonstrate, so I have a, a switch here that's labeled ground fault. What this is going to demonstrate is one of the transmission wires from digital electricity going to ground. You will not see a change on this volt server receiver. However, on the screen, you will see it tell you there is a ground fault somewhere. So as I hold this switch, wait a few seconds. And there's your alert. If I release the switch, again, it is checking communication and it will resume proper communication and clear the fault in the system. That in a nutshell, a rather large nutshell, is the Volt Server system and its capabilities. We have a transmitter, a receiver, powering a PoE switch that's powering three end devices, and it's all run on 18 gauge copper that's safe and can be run in your existing cable pathways. There you have it.